I've got no brakes. Once or twice in a lifetime, if you're lucky, you'll meet a vehicle that reminds you why four-wheel driving is just so damn good. And right now, I'm taking one of the greatest four-wheel drives ever made to meet the best four-wheel drive destination on Earth, Cape York. That's right, the G60 is alive and kicking, and we're heading to the tip of Australia. So jump in and I'll show you around this weapon of a 4 Last time you saw this old bus, I just won it in a game of pool, the southernmost pub in Tasmania. Right now, however, I'm on my way north to drive one of the most iconic tracks in the most northern part of Australia. How did I get here? Well, watch and find out. So as you can see, last time you folks saw this beautiful beast of a four wheel drive, I was almost in the southernmost part of Australia in Tasmania. Right now, we're gearing up to do the tally track. The whole idea behind it is it's the farm truck, Shawno's farm truck, and the old G60 Patrol. Just a reminder, what is this beastie? I mean, look at it. Do things get any more beautiful? She's lacking a little bit in the looks department, but I tell you what, I'm in love with it. 1977 it was born. Nissan Patrol G60, one of the first vehicles to open up Australia, in so much as Reg Spriggs, the first European to drive a motorised vehicle across the Simpson Desert, did it. Shouldn't do that, it'll fall apart. In one of these. This is a flash model. You can tell that because it's got three windscreen wipers up there. We've had to do quite a bit to get this old girl ready to do the tally. Now, as you all probably realise, old vehicles in general are hard to find parts for. G60 patrols, virtually impossible. But we have got this big rig trip ready and I'd love just to show you around a few of the bits and pieces that we've done. Have a look at this modern work of art. Of course, Cape York, there's so many water crossings up here. I couldn't have done it in a petty without a snorkel and air box. Now, it might surprise you to find you can't just go to your local four wheel drive store and buy an off the counter snorkel and air box for a G60 Patrol. So we fabbed this one up with the boys at Pinnacle. And I reckon you'll agree with me when saying it is an absolute work of art. What I love about it is they could have just put a metal top on this, but they've actually gone and put a see-through top on so I can just check if there's anything in there, which there isn't, which I'm surprised about. You know, what was funny about it is I called Steve and I said, mate, heck, I forgot about this. We're going to Cape York. We're going to need a snorkel. He said, shivers, I forgot as well. And I said, look, mate, I know you're under the pump. Let's just do something dodgy, just a plastic one. I don't know, add a stormwater pipe or something, just to get me through so that we can do the Cape and we'll worry about it when I get back. And he said, mate, ain't no four-wheel drive leaving my shop with a stormwater pipe as a snorkel. So I <laughs> got their guys on board and they fabbed this work of art up. And I've got to say, because it now has direct injection in there, it used to have a big, you would remember, a great big oil bath filter on there. We're going direct into the old carby now. She runs and purrs like a kitten. Kind of an asthmatic kitten, but she runs and purrs. <laughs> Talking pinnacle, the boys gave the vehicle an entire once over. They changed all the lubes, they did all the fluids, they did all the oils, they did absolutely everything on this to get it ready to come up here. But one thing you guys will remember, I blew the front diff while we were in Tasmania. So I rang my mate Jesse, who again is a Nissan expert. He knows everything about him. I said, mate, I need to get a front diff or at least a center for a G60. Sent him out there, he found me one. I paid exorbitant amount for it because these things are just becoming so rare, you can't get parts for them. So I paid way too much for that front diff. It was in a bit of a how you going state, but the internals were good. So we took the internals out of that one, and my diff housing on this, surprisingly, is in really good nick. We put the two together, a bit of a Frankenstein job, and we made a front diff for this. So now, of course, we're back to having four-wheel drive. For those of you that don't know about this engine, it is just basic, it is so basic. Six-cylinder, petrol, there's no bells and whistles in here. Um, you turn it on, and it goes. Not very fast. Very, very slow, but it goes every time. As with a lot of old car repairs, the more you start digging, the more you find. Luckily for us, right as we were about to drop the vehicle down off the hoist, I noticed the fuel tank had a leak. At first, we thought we could patch it up with a bit of chemi weld, but that was not going to work. The fuel tank was riddled with rust. We put our heads together and decided we could replace it with what we had lying around at off the wall. There were two that were going to fit a GU sub-tank and a 100 series sub-tank. So we figured, why not use both of them? We mounted the 100 series sub at the rear of the vehicle and the GU sub replaced the main fuel tank. We joined the two together and then used a simple 12 volt pump to transfer fuel back and forth. I was now back in the game and 
I had a sub tank in a G60 Patrol. How cool is that? Well, I'm super excited because Snatch has just released a whole new range of winter clothes. I've been asking the boys for these for ages, and I know you have too. If you're like me and you like getting out and having a bit of a camp in the colder months, this is the perfect clothing line for you. They've got puffer jackets like this one. They've also got puffer vests and flannel jackets as well. So if you can get some nice warm clothes for winter camping, make sure you jump on it quick. Check out the range at fulldrive247.com. Be quick though, because sizes are limited and socks won't last. I'm gonna get warm by the fire. She's looking a little bit rough and ready, but these bad boys right here, they, well, you could conservatively call them headlights. They don't really do too much, I've got to be honest. So we've put a set of the old hardcore spotlights up the front. Uh, I've got to be careful using these because my alternator doesn't put out that much. So I only use them in short bursts, trying to limit my nighttime driving. But when I do, poof, she lights up and it is so much better than these things here. Of course, we're doing the tally. There's going to come a point where you're going to have to winch. Chucked a runner in down here by adapting what could only really be described as, I think it might have been a farm gate. This bull bar at some stage, I think it might have been a farm gate, but the boys at Pinnacle managed to adapt it and they have made me a winch bracket to go on the front. Up the front, that's about it. Isn't that the most gorgeous front end you've ever seen? Rightio, when it comes to rubber, when I bought the old girl, I think it had two matching tyres on opposite sides of the vehicle and the other two didn't match at all. So I had like three different tyres and no spare. To that end, I've now matched up with <laughs> five, of course, Bridgestone jewelers in the 265 70R16s. Uh, and look, up here in Cape York, these bad boys are giving me the amount of traction on this red dirt and the clay. It's perfect, just works an absolute treat. For those of you who know your history, the G60s did not come out with free wheeling hubs. So of course, we've added these as well, just to, well, give it a little modern feel. Now, she's a little bit tight on comfort as well, so we've upgraded the shocks to a new set of fulcrums all the way around. And whilst I won't say this thing is a luxury mobile, it has given the ride just that little bit more smoothness on these corrugated tracks. Now, underneath here, I've got a full 12 volt setup with induction cooker and hot water system, as well as a microwave. It must have fallen out. Nah, we're going real basic this trip. Got the recovery gear in here, of course I've got a spare tyre, got me seat over there, got barbecue plate, 25 litres of water here so I can have a bit of a wash when we're not near a river. I borrowed this toolbox in here, now in here is my long range tank, sort of. I've got three jerry cans in there, 25 litres each, 75 litres of fuel, just got a few other bits and pieces in there, some lubricants, my boots are in there, that actually makes life really simple. Now, this old tray was built by the farmer when he bought the truck probably 30 years ago. I want to know what the wood is in here, I want to just take off and sand it back and find out what it is. It could be some sort of exotic Tasmanian hardwood. Because I tell you what, this tray has not let me down and I've kind of formed a bit of a bond with it. But watch this space because I've been talking to Tim from Mitts. No, I'm not going to go crazy with a big canopy, but we are cooking up a bit of an idea for the back of this. And I will be sad to see this old girl go. But for now, if you can do the cape with a tray like this, trust me, you can do it with anything. Now up the top here, you'll notice this <laughs> this structure. Again, I have a feeling this just came directly off the farm. It looks to me like a cattle grid. Uh, the farmer has welded it to the back of the vehicle and he's put a little platform up there and he told me that was his shooting platform for when he was out hunting. Now, I've gone and done a bit of that retro styling that all the young kids are doing these days and I've chucked me Max Tracks up there. Perfect. Righto. To get into the vehicle, you've got to use this modern state-of-the-art fingerprint recognition. You put your finger on that little pad. Nah. Handle fell off, you gotta push that there to get in. You're wondering what this is for? Why have I got an Oki strap on the outside of the vehicle? The reason being, for some, I don't know, it's inexplicable. When I'm driving along, the vehicle does an anti-gravity thing and the window actually goes up. So I've got an Oki strap around the window winder down to the bottom of the door so that when I'm driving, my window doesn't go up and make me hot. But, for whatever we've done on the outside and however this vehicle looks, the real heart and soul of this vehicle is in the driving experience. It's unlike any other four-wheel drive on the market. There's so many quirky things in here that I've got to show you because to drive a G60 anywhere, let alone the Cape, is to drive a true old-school four-wheel drive. You live and breathe it when you're in here. So come with me, I want to take you for a drive. Now, as you all know, woohoo, she's noisy. To start a vehicle, you need a key. That key there is from a Fiat. This vehicle will use just about any key. So I have an entire key ring full of Fiat keys, just in case I lose that one there. 
quirky. She's a quirky beast. Now, to start the old girl, basically, you check you're in neutral, which is really difficult to do because the gearbox wobbles around like a loose tooth. Give it a bit, and she roars into life. Couple of things you're gonna need to know. Over here, we've got our air conditioning. <laughs> Windows, main source of air conditioning. Down here, sub-source of air conditioning. If it's a stinking hot day, open your side vent. Remember to close that when you've got a deep water crossing. Got to keep the revs up. Now, three speed, but there's also four levers down here. This one here, high and low range. This one here, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. And over here, a handbrake. Doesn't do a damn thing because the collar's broken off. Three speeds. She crunches into the first, second and third, a smooth as. Oh, by the way, you're probably wondering what these weird things are here. There's three of them. These are your demisters. You turn the heater on. I'm not even joking. Air squirts up out of there and demists the whole cab. Are you ready? Oh yeah, it's a race car. Now, the beautiful thing about this vehicle is the size of the steering wheel. The reason the steering wheel is this big is because we have absolutely no power steering whatsoever. We're also fairly limited on comfort. First gear, up into second. First gear is where second gear normally is in any other vehicle. Hold on. Second gear is where third gear would be in any other vehicle. Hold on, hold on, I've got no brakes. Third gear, the only other gear I've got is where you'd normally find fourth. That just leaves reverse. <laughs> reverse is where first would normally be. A lot of people fall into that trick. You'll be in a shopping centre car park, you'll go to take off and you'll reverse into the car behind you. And one of the big tricks, if you ever find yourself so lucky as to be in third speed, and you gotta go back down into second, you gotta double clutch the old girl. Out, in, in, back and driving. Oh, it's like NASCAR, Formula One, and the V8 supercars, all in one. Once you're going though, you get air coming through, the windows are down, the surround sound system turns on, which is the sound of the vehicle, and it really is an absolute pleasure to drive. It's like no other. One last thing I need to tell you. If you're gonna own an old vehicle like this one, especially a, oh, I've got a horn. Can you hear that? If you're gonna own an old vehicle, like a G60, somewhere in the vehicle, you gotta have an older Cobra. I keep mine up there. How good is this thing? Now the two most important switches on the dash, this one here, your lights. You got parkers and main lights. This bit's real tricky and blows people's minds. High beam, low beam is not a stick on the collar. It's a weird little thing under your left foot. You gotta click your left foot down to turn high beam, low beam off. I've been outside when both high beam and low beam are on. There's no difference, don't worry about it. Leave that bit alone, <laughs> it'll just confuse you. <laughs> Turn me lights off. The next most important button is over here. Now this is the flash model, because I've got three of them. But to turn your windscreen wipers on, you go out once for slow, out twice for super fast, dizzying, and then you turn it clockwise, and it squirts on the window. How flash is that? So that, in a nutshell, is the big G60. Now, keep your ear to the ground, turn your notifications on, and get ready because Sean and I, of course, are heading up to do the telly track in this and the farm truck. Head to head, old school trucks on one of the oldest and most famous four wheel drive tracks in Australia. Now, let me know in the comments down below, what do you reckon of this old girl? She's got, oh, I forgot to mention the brakes on this thing, cactus. I need to start stopping down around Bramwell before I hit the top end because I've got zero brakes on this. With that in mind, if you owned this with no brakes, 47 years old, would you drive it down gunshot? Should I drive it down gunshot? Put them in the comments down below. You spell no N-O, by the way. Now, whilst I've got your attention, folks, I need a couple of parts for this vehicle. Seriously, I need a door handle, and if you've got any old G60 Nissan badges, because these ones are about to fall off, they're being held on with cable ties, I'd love to know. Folks, get yourself an old four-wheel drive, borrow an old four-wheel drive, spend some time in an old four-wheel drive, 
because to get behind the wheel of this is to truly get behind a bit of Australian four-wheel driving history. I love the thing.